morning, Saturday 17th of November. Today we're going to uh, see Angkor Wat. That's uh, the biggest stone temple in the world, one of the most impressive stone temples in the world as well. So uh, that's what we're doing today. It's spread out over a big area. Angkor Wat is only one of 700 temples in this area here. There used to be a vast empire that used to live here. So we'll see as many as we can. I think it's probably going to take a few days to see uh, what we have to see here. But let's see how it goes. You ready? Yes. So. Yeah, now we're ready to go to Angkor Wat. Okay, so Angkor Wat lies about five kilometers north of uh, Siem Reap. So we're just taking the bikes up there today, park them outside, and then we'll be able to use them to hop around to the temples as well. Okay, you can't actually go straight to the temple to buy a ticket. You have to yeah, go to this place here, four kilometers away out of the town, where they have a huge ticket office and buy a, a three-day pass. It costs sixty-two dollars, but luckily Jamie is free because he's under twelve. So now we have the ticket. Now we can go back to the temple. Also, an Anchor Wat International Half Marathon. Probably a hot place to run a marathon here. Okay, so this is the huge moat surrounding Anchor Wat. The moat itself is actually a feat of engineering just on its own. It's two uh, football pitches wide. Okay, so here we are. Okay, so today the first temple we're visiting is the, the largest one is uh, Angkor Wat. This is just uh, behind us there. And the first thing we see is this huge moat, which is a uh, just as big a feat of engineering as the actual temple itself. This is a two football pitches wide, 1.3 kilometers long by 1.5 wide. Amazing. All this is uh, dug out by hand or whatever machines they <laughs> invented at that time. But, uh, yeah, in the center of the moat here, this is Angkor Wat. This is the biggest temple here in the area and the main temple. And this is the one we're going to start by visiting. So Angkor Wat is uh, situated in the floodplains of the Mekong River. So, uh, in the rainy season the river swells and produces a huge lake which uh, for the engineers here creates a bit of a challenge because uh, this uh, temple here is actually built or well, surrounded by a moat which actually means the temple is actually floating and they ensure that the moat is uh, full of water all the year which means that uh, it doesn't collapse otherwise in the dry season when the water disappears the building would just start to crumble but uh, this moat it has uh, several functions and one of those is enabling it to float well, this is the main entrance here um, Anchor Wat, Anchor that means city and uh, Wat means temple but this area here is not only one temple there's about 700 temples it covers a vast area used to be uh, one of the biggest civilizations in the world. Over a million people lived in this city here. Completely incredible to think about. By King Sure Raman II, believed to be built in the 12th century. So at the time in uh, France when they were building the Notre Dame, this was being built here in the middle of the jungle. Believed it took uh, 37 years to build with, of course, thousands and thousands of people and thousands of elephants. But, uh, of course, it is not as well researched as other historical sites like the pyramids, so it's still uh, a lot to learn here. Exactly how they built this is still pretty unknown. It's actually a Hindu temple. Um, they believed in the ancient times there was a large trade between uh, India and uh, Cambodia with the monsoon winds blowing uh, across the sea, allowing people and traders to, to work here for six months and then uh, be blown back by the by the winds again. So this is a Hindu temple. This temple, this is dedicated to Hindu god uh, Vishnu. This is the Hindu god Vishnu. In the 15th century, this uh, temple was actually converted to a Buddhist temple. Which Cambodia is now 95% Buddhist. Thousands and thousands of Hindu gods, but now it's reduced down to three. This is uh, Shiva, one of the three main Hindu gods. And you can see a lot of the statues here have been damaged. 
whether by looters or tourists and anybody that's taken things from here. No, we enter through the main gate. In the 15th century, the capital moved from, from here, from Anka, to Phnom Penh. And if you just left to, to the monks, the central tower there is actually 213 meters high. It's much taller than it appears actually. It was actually rediscovered in the 1920s by a French explorer. So from the 15th century until the, oh the 20th century, this was lost to the jungle. The jungle has started to take over. As you'll see when we go to some of the other temples in the next few days, completely uh, taken over by the roots and the trees. But, uh, Angkor Wat here, this has been uh, partially restored now with different projects. The temple has also had a hard time with uh, looters. Even uh, tourists chopping off uh, the heads of statues and uh, during the Khmer Rouge's time it's also been uh, plundered. So four swimming pools here. Well, it used to be swimming pools. This stone here, this marks the centre of Angkor Wat. Temple and more impressive than I expected. It's supposed to rival the pyramids of Egypt on the engineering scale, but also as a masterpiece, it's equivalent to the Taj Mahal. So, uh, yeah, when you see it in real life, it is quite an impressive building. to climb the main temple here in the centre of Angkor Wat. Okay, so we just climbed 47 steps into the main temple here. It used to be 37, some of the steepest steps of any temple, but that's not allowed to be used, it's too dangerous. So now we're in the top of the main temple here. This is where the king, Surai Vaman II, the king that built this temple, he's buried under there. This is the center of the temple here. A lot of this is built with uh, perfectly Put stones, no cement whatsoever. You can see now just how steep the steps are here. These are the new steps that built are more safe than the original steps. Just giving him an ice cream. What do you think of that monkey?
Yeah, the next temple we're going to see is Panon Beking. It's supposed to be popular with sunset, so it's about one hour to go until sunset, so let's go and see if we can get up there in time. We only allow 300 people at a time up there, so I'm not sure whether we'll get up there to see something. Let's see if we look here. Okay, about 30 minutes to go, and we're still in the queue here. <laughs> Will we see anything or just the queue? It yeah, may have a chance. Maybe the sunset's already over. Lots of people are coming down. <laughs> All right. Okay, looks like we just missed the spectacular sunset. It's uh, still a nice view anyway. Many, many people up here. Temple exploring, it's nice to come back to Pop Street. Nice end of the day here. Yeah. 